Welcome to another tutorial here at LightingBot. We are continuing the Unity URP Lighting tutorial into Tripod Lighting. In real life, the directional light can do a lot of the work. Yeah, it does the rim light, it does the fill light, it kind of bounces around and it does a lot of the work. Even outside in the control setting, you have the key light and it kind of does all the works, the specularity and so on. In interior lighting, it's the same thing. You can place the lights and you can create the mood as well. But because we are trying to do more than just natural lighting, we want to have a specific purpose for the lighting. So we'll practice the three point lighting to create the rim light, to create the fill light, and kind of control the shape of the figure, the shape of the object. And that's the key thing. The three point lighting is meant to create the shape and the form, and then eventually story through the placement and the color. Next up, or the first thing in terms of in Unity, we're gonna add the point light. Now, you don't need to add a point light and you shouldn't normally add a point light, but just for the sake of example, we're gonna add a point light. And I'm gonna add it in a way that it covers mostly the right side of the face. So the opposite of the camera. The camera is more towards the left side and I wanna cover the light on the opposite side, right side of the camera and also right side of the face somewhere around here I just want to cover the face and also cover the eyes and then a little bit on the bottom of the um, body and then inside of the skull basically now you can move the light away to dim it as I said before you can reduce the intensity of the light if you want if it's too bright I'm gonna put it on 2.5 because I'm gonna use range to dim it down because I don't want any background light coming from this light. I just want enough to fill the light. And then I'm gonna just randomly pick a color. Maybe this one. So that's the key light. The purpose of the key light is to be the brightest. The purpose of the key light is to fill the face and there's different ways and techniques. This is almost kind of like Rembrandt lighting. Normally Rembrandt light has a triangle and it's kind of is a tri triangle here. But Rembrandt lighting and Rembrandt paintings is uh, things you can look up on. And we will maybe cover that too actually. But basically you can see that it's Rembrandt broad is what I call it. Because it kind of broadens the, the image. Uh, by making sure that we are fading in and kind of shaping the, the mask a little bit. But it's not enough. Next thing, you can either add a backlight or a spotlight in terms of the fill light. So fill light or backlight. I'm going to use a spotlight and I'm going to go left side of the camera, opposite of the, um, the key light. And I'm going to make sure that I can cover enough area to fill in the, the dark side. But it's too bright. It's kind of competing with the key light. So I'm going to dim it down. So it's just a little bit. I'm going to reduce the range. So I only hit the face and the sides a little bit and then maybe for the fun of it maybe I'll try a different color maybe a bit light blue color like so okay now you don't see the background it's and we're not separating the background there's two ways of approaching it you can uh, fill the background itself or you can room light the character so let's try and see if we can achieve both by using a, a spotlight so that you can fill in the background very quickly like this and then if you want you can move the characters shape by moving the light you can kind of see okay is there anywhere that would help in terms of separating the character obviously you don't need it as bright so you might do a lot less for in this case and in this case you might also try maybe a different color like so all right so that's the purpose of the three-point lighting the purpose of three-point lighting is to help you do lighting in a structured and organized way you have the key light which is the strongest light 2.5 you have the fill light which is can often be the second uh, strongest light at 0 0.5 and you have the fill light 
which is often at the back and in this case I've kept it at 0.5 to have strong highlights but there's nothing stopping you to make it really subtle but the reason that we didn't do it is just because I want to make sure that the background is also a little bit filled and getting this vignette effect without adding post-processing effect all right This is a Rembrandt Harmeson von Rhein. He is the classical painter and this is his self-portrait here, right here. You can see the technique he uses in paintings are on the right side. It's a triangle that shows up on the darker side of the painting. We use it very commonly towards the camera. So the darker side tends to be towards the camera and the bright side that creates the Rembrandt triangle and lighting. The key light is often on the left side away from the camera. And you can use soft light, you can use aerial light, it doesn't really matter as long as it creates the harsh enough shadow uh, and contrast that you can see it. For the animal model, he doesn't have a nose that actually goes all this way out as it does on human, so you don't get to see that clear shape in our example here in this tutorial. But it's still Rembrandt broad in this case. So it's a very good technique to create a contrast and shape and form and you use the fill light to fill in the darker side. So. Now you have some basic intro on Rembrandt lighting. So that's that. So now I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to show you two other examples that I have prepared. So you have this one, you have the key light. Uh, it's pretty broad, it's pl placed up kind of the same place and the reason we place it the same place is also because of the eyes we're trying to get that specular effect and cover the eyes properly get some specular effect on the bottom areas mostly the face so you get some shape you can see this one is intensity four we have a backlight and in this case i'm using an area light to fill in the background and it's intensity one with a range of 3.5 you have a fill light which is another spotlight which is only 0.5 and range 2. Its purpose is to make sure that we can fill in the darkness a little bit and the edges of this uh, and, and kind of get the speck effect that you can see uh, popping up on the on the edges here. Now the difference here is we're going to bake it as well because the arrow light needs to be baked. So we're going to bake it and you can see uh, how it ends up looking uh, once that backlight is added as an added effect as well okay so now you can see it comes from the bottom and goes up in this particular example right you have the light on the right side you have a fillet on the left you have specular effects happening across the screen and the helmet you get the general shape okay now Light bounces around and I'm going to keep repeating it until you understand the mindset and how to use your eye properly. So these marked areas, they will be completely black. Now black cloth obviously absorbs light as previously mentioned and the light they keep mentioning these things. So this would how it would be looking like if light stopped on its first surface it's hit. But in photography and the way we want to work, we want to control the lighting and we can steal things from photography to do that. So the reflector is on the right side in this video and it's used instead of an actual light source, it's used as a fill light. So the light hits the surface and it bounces back to the darker side. The next example, let's clear the data and let's do the bonus example. Here in this example, it's similar. You have the key light. The key light is now further up. So it gives more of a specular effect on the top of the face, but it also goes into the mask a little bit. So you get to see the behind a little bit, but we keep light hitting on the shoulder, lower shoulder ribs as well and you can see it's also hitting the top of the helmet a bit more then you have the backlight as well the backlight obviously is still an aerial light with a certain intensity what's different though is we're using a plane we're using an old school technique uh, which is still viable today to add in the fill light so if i bake now because both because you need it for the bounce light that comes on the plane which is kind of acting up as a reflector that we often use in movies and cinema. 
and you have the bake light filling up in the background. Okay, so you can see that distance has already been placed for a reason, and you can see it's filling in. So if I turn it off and I do another bake to show you what happens when you don't have this uh, reflector that you can see through when it's on at the back as well when you're using a plane. Here you can see it's, it's, it's pretty dark. So if I turn it back on and on top of that let's put a more white texture material on it. And what you'll see now is it's gonna increase the light even more here. See that? Now it's even more bright because even though I didn't change the distance of my fake plane reflector, which you can see through, you can see through. So you could have a camera on the other side if you needed to. Um, no problem. You can see it's giving this interesting look as well and the fill light for it. And this obviously uses less light. Essentially, I only have two lights. I have the aerial light and I have the, the, the key light and I use the reflector instead. Um, which obviously helps if you need to uh, have a different type of optimization or a different workflow or maybe you want more natural bounce light uh, that's evenly spread and you don't want to use another area light because of rendering time whatever reason you can do this as well now if I then go even further and I say okay I want um, very dark texture and as briefly just discussed before and we will continue to emphasize the theory and why it's important to understand real life lighting and color is that if I use a dark texture less lights is gonna bounce from it and you can see now it becomes more contrasty this is also why it's important to have the key like kind of cover the key areas like most of the face and the eyes because then you can do these kind of things right now if I push this pretty close and I do another bake, because it's closer, the light's not traveling that far. It's uh, stopping on time pretty early. So it's gonna bounce a lot more despite the material. Okay. You can see it, it's filling up a lot more uh, in this example. So depending on what you're going for and, and kind of what you're, you're hoping for, you can also make it bigger if, if that's needed. And that's also going to have a subtle effect, sometimes a very big effect, because you have to remember the range and size of the light casting. And in this case, it's, it's pretty big. So if I have a bigger reflector, more light is going to hit it and more light is also going to react and bounce off on it. And it's going to bounce on the floor and it's going to bounce around according to the size as well. Okay. And then if I turn it down and I, maybe I, I, you know, just bake it again. And this is kind of the workflow you use. So here you can see there's two examples. Uh, extra where we had the, uh, the three point lighting kind of showed previously where we use error lights from three different points as well that's obviously also a viable way of doing it now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to continue and we're going to explore a little bit in terms of color so i've already given you two examples of color but I want you guys to uh, do an exercise and once you have the three point lighting, I want you to go in and play with the colors and see what happens when you use different colors and what color matches the lighting and mood. All right. So thanks for watching and uh, have a nice day. Thanks for watching. Remember, we have a lot of other content. So please like, subscribe and share, watch the interviews and so on.